Yo, what's happening, y'all? It's your man, Valentine, baby. Coming to you from on the grind. I know, man. The sun is gone. But maybe tomorrow. But you know how it go down? See, home edition. But the inside edition. Man, listen, I want to give it to y'all outside, but it's Van City rules, man. But anyway, yeah, you know, today is all about black people getting, black people in the system getting a coaching job or doing anything else in the business world where they can't get a leg up. You know what I mean? And this is, this has been going on for a long, long time. And I mean, the NFL got the Rooney rule where they've got to give African-Americans um, interviews for coaching jobs or management or whatever it is. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to think of how many black coaches there are, head coaches or owners in the NFL or the NBA or MLB, even the soccer leagues, European soccer. You've got the MSL in, in, in North America. I mean, the Air Henri in Montreal, MSL. You've got, uh, I think, Michael Jordan, who owns, who's the owner of uh, Charlotte Hornets. And then Mike's gonna be an owner in, in NASCAR, right? So. You've got that, and then you got the Jaguars owner. And I mean, I can't I can't see anybody else owning in one of the major sports. You know, a big uh, uh, I mean, Magic owns half of the Dodgers, I think. But I mean, this one it, it's it's hard. Because there's systemic racism still going on in in the uh, in, in sports, but at the higher levels, and we understand because you know the the it's not the socioeconomic reasons. It's just systemic racism, because the NBA has. I think, I, I don't know if Doc Rivers got a job yet, but I mean, there's six black people, black coaches that are out of a job right now. And, and there's, there's even Mark Jackson on uh, um, ESPN, where he's a commentator now or a, or a host. You know, Mark Jackson should be a coach. Jason Kidd should be a coach. Nate McMillan should be a coach. And we know Doc Rivers should definitely be a coach. And I know Stephen A. was talking about on, on, on his first take this, this morning, where, or this afternoon, where he's talking about how the, um, the NBA players, man, as black players, they haven't, stand, they haven't stood up for their, their, their black coaches. And he was upset about them standing up for social justice and racial equality and, and uh, the, the, uh, um, the rights for, for freedom and this and that and Black Lives Matter. And Stephen A was like, hey, look, why is it that black players are not standing up for um, black coaches, but they would stand up for all these other measures? And he was hot. So, I mean, and we, we look at their systemic racism. This is why black coaches are probably not getting the job because 
somehow, and even Max Kellerman, I think he said he was talking about preference and how that if they look and interview somebody who's Afro-American and um, for the GM or the head coaching or the ownership or something, they have a preference to, to who they want in that job. And I mean, Messiah Jury and, and T.O. in the six is only the, is the only one. And, but yeah, Messiah is Nigerian or, or, or African, but and he's not Afro-American. So, I mean, but still, he's still a brother being the GM. You feel what I'm saying? So, and I forgot my man's name in, in um, I think he's in Washington or did he leave? Oh, what is his name? I forgot my man's name, but big time, um, Ozzie Newsom. So I think, I don't know if he's still there, but he's a GM that's, um, that was in, I think, uh, Washington. I think, then now I think he's in Cleveland. And this is how the Browns got turned around because Ozzie did some amazing things. And, but the, the fact that there are coaches out there that should have a chance at these jobs. And, and I know that, that we look at, I'm gonna look at this one way because Steve Nash is now the coach of New Jersey. And I look at that and I go, how is it that none of the brothers, none of the black people had first dibs on this where they've had more experience than this dude? Steve Nash has never been a coach before. It doesn't matter about his accolades. Mark Jackson's been a coach before. Mark Jackson turned around Golden State Warriors before Steve Kerr got there. Nate McMillan's been a coach in Indiana. Yes, he's been out of the playoffs the last three, four years, whatever it is, in the first round. Jason Kidd has been a coach. He's now, I think he's in L.A. right now coaching with L.A. as a, an assistant or something. So, and, I mean, I don't know, man. It, it, it's... The Knicks job is open. Definitely. You know what I mean? Houston is open. New Orleans is open. Oklahoma is open. So I'm hoping that they're going to give a black person an interview for this job. Because it is high time that we get some black coaches in, in the NBA that has all black players. Or well, not all black players, but there's mostly black players that play in the league. You feel what I'm saying? So, it, it's a no-brainer. And this is what I'm saying. It, it, it happens in, in, in sports. It happens outside of sports. Because for me to try to get a job and try to move up in the system, they're going to look at the color of my skin before they look at my resume. You feel what I'm saying? So this is why it's so hard for black people to take that next step. And it, it, it just gets harder and harder until somebody starts looking at the human side of things instead of, the, instead of looking at the color of their skin. Because there needs to be some black, more black coaches in the NBA, also in the NFL, also in, you know what, in the NHL. Why is there no black coach in the NHL? Black people can play hockey. And coach, you know what I mean? Lots of cats go through who've been NHL superstars and been NHL players. So it's a matter of them giving them an opportunity. So people, you've got to give them, black people, an opportunity to coach. Use that Rooney rule to make sure that an Afro-American gets an opportunity instead of bypassing them. Like they bypass Eric Bieniemy in, in Kansas City and not giving him a job and going to the college levels and picking a college coach to, to get another to get the job. You know what? Eric Bieniemy is a stud. So we need to get we need to get on top of things, man. So we need to end the systemic racism of the the socioeconomic things and 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 the. Uh, all the, all the fact of racism that you can't get a black person to be the coach or the manager or the owner. So give the black people a chance and you will see what happens because listen, hey man, 
if we go back to John Thompson, look at John Thompson at, at, at Georgetown. Killed it in wins in, in, in Georgetown. You know what I mean? And some of the best black coaches were in, in, in college. Uh, my man from Grambling. And now you got, I think, uh, uh, um, I forgot who's at Grambling right now. Doug Williams. Doug Williams is the coach of, of Grambling, I think, or Southern. And Doug Williams is the, one of the black quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl, besides Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson. You know what I mean? So there's some smart cats out there, man, and y'all need to give them an opportunity. And I know there's six black people out there that, that in the NBA with four or five teams that need a coach. Look at the black folks. Look at the Afro-American people and give them an opportunity to make sure that you end the systemic racism that is going on and of not giving black people a chance to become coaches or head coaches or GMs or whatever they want to become. You know what I mean? So if we can end it at that level, we can end it at the lower levels too. Because black people need an opportunity to get jobs and, and move up in the system. So they just need an opportunity. You feel what I'm saying? Yo, remember y'all that we're dealing with this pandemic, man. And we already know that one of Trump's people, you see, it don't matter if you're getting tested, man. One of Trump's people, her name is Hope something. Um, I don't know. I forgot her name. I know it's, her name is Hope, but she's, she's his assistant. So she tested positive, even though they get tested all the time. So this is what I'm saying, man. This virus is not a joke. So y'all got to take it seriously. And even though you get tested, positive, tested all the time, as this assistant, Hope, gets tested positive. So... We need to make sure that we're staying safe because this pandemic is no joke. And this pandemic does not discriminate. Only the pandemic of racism does. So y'all got to get it together and make sure that you stay safe. And remember, Kamala Harris says it. Racism has no vaccine. But they're trying to get one for this virus. So we have to hold on for that. And we will change because that's the only thing that we can do to change racism, to make sure that we do the right things. You know what I mean? And anyway, make sure you wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, stay out of the big crowds, and make sure you do everything to make sure you keep your family safe and do not be selfish. You feel what I'm saying? So handle your business, people, and stay safe. Wear a mask. Yo, I'm your man Valentine, baby. If you think it's your time to shine, you need to get on the grind with your man Valentine. Remember, Biden-Harris 2020, y'all. Get out and vote. Let your vote count.